Good morning everyone and on today's episode of Pinchel's Garage we are working on a 2003 VW Passat B5.5 now on this DIY it's a big one this is an overhaul DIY so this is a long one but I think you guys are gonna enjoy it so what's gonna happen is that we actually have to replace the the front core support is all have to be replaced today and after the core support, we're going to show you how to remove pretty much the whole front end and swap out your core support. Once we're done with that, we're going to be doing intake manifold gasket. We're going to do a valve cover gasket, spark plugs, um, do a cleanup over here. We got a new hockey puck. Uh, we got to do the lower PCV uh, crankcase uh, breather uh, since mine just cracked. Uh, we're doing thermos, uh, thermostat housing and uh, thermostat, lower radiator hose. Uh, we got a couple check valves that need to be replaced. Um, for example, right here. So we're going to start replacing some check valves, the suction pump. Um, so pretty much we're going to be taking off the whole right side of this uh, engine bay. And the whole front end. We're going to have to fix all these vacuum lines. You see this is cracked. This is it. We're going to be putting our ABD intake, uh, uh, cold air intake back in. So yeah, let's uh, get to work because this is a big project. And as always, this is Pinchao's Garage. And as we do it here is we break, break, fix, and repeat. Step one will be to obviously take off the front bumper, but once you get the bump, front bumper taken off, we need to start figuring out what is actually holding the core support up. Uh, your headlights will have to be disconnected. Uh, they have two screws on top and one, there's another one somewhere down here. Uh, it's one, two, three, I think, I don't think that's the third one. Actually, there are one, two, and there's two back here. We'll show you how to get to those, but there's four. There's always four screws for headlights. Um, once you get those four, then the headlight can come off. Uh, once the headlights are removed, then you can get access to the rest of the actual um, core support and actually a front crash beam. Uh, I'm going to actually take all this off, and we're going to repaint it. And we also got to, once we're done with all that, the intercooler has to be disconnected, um, which actually had to modify. This is actually an Audi A4 intercooler uh, from eBay or Amazon, whatever you want to call it, which is like I modified the crap out of it so I can actually work on the Passats. They're kind of similar. They're not identical. They're kind of, and there's a lot of hacking you got to do to make it work, but they work. I tell you that they do work. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, let's get to, let's get to removing the headlights. So for the headlights, one, two, and then there's number three. If you see that right there, and then number four. You unscrew those all the way, and then the headlight should just pop right out. Same process on this side. One, two, number three. And number four is a little bit harder on this one to find. Oh, there it is. Number four. Right in between those wires. Okay. Make sure you unplug your headlight harness. Before you do anything else, pop your headlights out. And then we'll work our way, work our way around the, uh, the front of the car. Uh, you can unbolt most of everything on the front. 
but then we're going to have to drain the coolant because to take the whole front end off, the coolant has to be drained. So we'll take this out of the way. So in traditional aspects of this, um, get yourself some sandwich bags. Remember that very, very important rule is to have sandwich bags with you and labeling everything you take off. That way you put it back in the right spot. It's very, very important. three now the big ones in the back are the I mean the two in the back are the much much larger ones so uh, you can also use a 10 millimeter uh, ratchet to get to these two it's actually not a 10 millimeter it's an 8 millimeter for the bolts quicker access to the uh, the nut right there make sure you guys take off the uh, little rubber grommet here and it gives you straight access to the um, to the actual uh, bolt here to the headlight there's that uh, if you don't want to lose these just put them back on how they go on. Uh, unplug your harness. Slide your headlight out. Or try to. <laughs> holding it back now this front core support here so we got to get bolts some army baggies so headlights won't come out until this comes off so baggy headlight bolts I didn't forget to write it down yet. I'm just busy doing something else. So took off the rubber grommet here. Connected. Leave it alone. Now let's actually start working on the front support. So zip these away and then right on them. Headlight.
Done. Throw them in your box. Go to the next one. Alright, since we got all that taken care of. Okay, so now we're getting to actually removing the front core or the front level, I guess, or this brace right here, whatever you guys want to call it. Okay. There's that one. and find the next one right down here. Four. There's that side coming off. And five. So five bolts in total, everyone, to remove this brace. Uh, this brace actually does hold the front bumper, just so you guys know. So once that's removed, kind of slide it up without dropping the headlights. And then pull your headlights out one at a time. Um, I'm probably going to keep these bolts under the headlight bolts because this, this is what actually holds them in place. So, staying together in the baggie, put them in the box. So now that we got the main portion of the, I guess the skeleton, now the next piece is actually getting rid of this big metal bar. You guys can see what I'm talking about. This big bar here has to come out next. So there's a couple ways you guys can go about this. Keep this on, which nothing else is touching it. Um, pull that one out. That's the uh, AC line or something. Just water. Um, so we need a, there's three, one, uh, a 10 millimeter, and then three, uh, looks like a star bits uh, that holds this whole crash beam in, part of, in place. So let's hop to it. So first things first, get your 10 mil. So I guess there's a six point star is a T45 or Torx. Um, it's a T45, so very, very uncommon uh, socket or tool. You don't use very much, but you do use it on this car. Now, everything I take off from here, we're gonna call it the core support because this is pretty much what it is. It's the main core, core support for the car. Now, as it sits, we're only gonna take off three right now of these T45s. Actually, you know, I'm just gonna take all four off. Love tap will do. Now 
Now just make sure you do the same thing for both sides and then we'll show you what to do next. So with all eight bolts removed, grab the front support and yank it out. There's that bad boy. Now we're even closer to our core support or front end removal. So, look at that baggie. Now, on Passats, they're a little funky. Um, you need to follow where everything's bolted onto. So. Follow the plastic. Okay, that's what's going to tell you what goes where. So there's one here. Here. One there. So what's cool about Passat, they're identical on both sides. So do the same thing. One here. One there. Uh, we're going to have to remove the front mount intercooler, obviously, to get to the rest of the core support. Um, let me see here. So, yeah. So, we got to unbolt it here, unbolt the intercooler there, take the piping out of the way. Might have to just pull the piping out, to be honest. And then, this is where you got to make that decision. You can either go two ways about this. You can pull the whole support, or there's a shortcut. How, you might ask? Well, I'll show you. This is coming back to me since the last time I did the timing belt on this car. So, you can actually unplug the radiator here. These little supports here hold the radiator in place. And um, take those out. Obviously, take out your um, unbolt your intercooler, and you can swing the con AC condenser out of the way. You might need something to hold it up, and then you can pull the radiator out. Uh, obviously, uh, on disconnecting it from the two upper and lower hoses, and then that'll give you the access you need to go underneath here. And get all the stuff that you need to get underneath here. Uh, you you might need to uh, unmount the AC, um, the big fan, so you can give front front access to the car. And that would save you about an hour of your progress. So it all depends on how you want to go about this. Um, I need to remove everything, so. I'm gonna have to disconnect everything out out of here because I have to. I, re, I got to replace this uh, support frame um, and do a lot of hacking when I put it back on because freaking intercooler is there. So, just FYI, if you're not replacing the core support and you just want to get in to do some of the work that we're doing, you can unbolt everything here. Do not touch the core support. You can take the well, if you factory intercoolers underneath whatever but unbolt your front mount unbolt the condenser you're going to need something to hold it because this condenser's AC lines are right here they actually let you swing all the way out and then you can just pull the in uh, disconnect the radiator and pull the radiator out of the way and that's it it gives you access and that's how you also do the timing belt job on this car too um, if you ever guys ever seen my DIY for an A4 Audi it's the same process exact same process um, so just a good pointer for you guys. Now, with a three-quarter, three-quarter inch uh, hose, uh, you want to attach it to this little nipple right here on the side, and open up the pegcock right here. Start draining out your coolant. Stop making a mess. So while that's draining, you can start loosening all the other parts that you need to actually uh, 
start taking out of the car. Um, it's a slower process, for sure, but it'll get the job done. That way you don't have to worry about making a mess. Or as much of a mess. <laughs> So the next step is to get the condenser out of the way. So keep close attention to what's actually bolted to the condenser. Um, so these don't have to be touched. All we need to do is touch this little uh, guy here which locks this in place. Same thing on the other side. So with the little flyhead screwdriver. this little lockout. They're usually a little bit easier than that. Just be careful not to break these because these are hard to find. I would suggest uh, pulling out your what to call your tab here. Your pull tab. The hood latch because you might end up yanking it out. So once these are disconnected, they're just little hinges you pull out. Everything's okay because this these lock here in place just by literally just not by much and then pull the condenser out of the way. So as long as it's out of the way, nothing to worry about, okay? Um, so now the radiator's next. Uh, so the radiator has a similar setup, the two little pull tabs. But before you even get to that, remove the upper radiator hose. Uh, I am not going to even try to yank the. This radiator is fine. I'm not. I don't know how often I tell you guys, but pulling the hoses from the radiator is such a B-I-T-C-H, you can break them every single time, even though this radio is pretty new, you can still break them, they're still, it's really cheap plastic, so, pull it off from the metal portion, so you're going to crimp it, and get it out of the way.
So the upper radiator hose is gone. I mean disconnected. Um, just check your metal piping. Make sure there's no major corrosion. If there is, clean it up. Mine's pretty good. Uh, so upper hose is done. Now the lower one, I'm already in order, ordering a new lower radiator hose. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to risk it and yank it off and just pray I don't break it. You don't understand. suck. This is being a, a nuisance here. My neighbor trying to get that Mustang running. So that's disconnected from the coolant reservoir tank. So we're going to have to pull this out as well. So just personally take the, uh, the hard line one out. Have you got a chance? Is there any, any hose that's hooked up to a hard line? Not a piece of plastic, but an actual metal line. Remove it from the metal side. <laughs> You have a better chance of not breaking it on the metal side than you do on the actual plastic side. box over here. Sorry guys. It just chills on this. Actually the AC works on this car. <laughs> Believe it or not. So we've taken the middle. This line out. This line off. We're going to work on the coolant expansion tank here. Um, there's three Phillips screws right there that holds that in place. Just take it out, get it out of the uh, equation. So, on the next part here, doing the lower radiator hose, you'll see there's a sensor right here. There's a clip. You can go two ways unplug it and out of the way, or unclip it and take it out. And then there's a, another clip right over here. You yeah, unclip that and then wiggle the lower radiator hose out. Uh, that will get you pretty much to the next portion here. Once we get that removed, uh, the rest of the front end can be removed actually. Because that's the last thing in our way of taking this whole thing apart. So now that we got the lower and upper radiator hoses uh, disconnected, now it's actually to, to pull the radiator out. Um, Because the fans are attached to the core support here. So next thing is these little suckers. You guys are tricky. So same thing as the other ones. 
you um, push this down and then just pull it out. Nothing special. It's just being careful not to break them. That's a that's the hard part. Well, I guess I have to remove the upper radiator hose. Thought the hole was big enough for it to come out. So sketchy every time I do that. Hate that. Now that the front is now fully exposed. The only thing you need to worry about is this fan here. This is your uh, AC fan. This is your normal fan. Um, so this one's kind of cool because it's kind of like a clock. Um, give me a second. So what I end up doing before I actually take the fan off. I unplugged the main fan harness, which actually plugs in right here with this little array of mounting brackets right there. Just unplug them. Next thing you're going to need to do is take the screw off from this bracket, take the screw off of that bracket, screw off of this one, and this one. And this should be one for the mount right here, the, what they call a snub mount on the front. And then take the wiring off the horn, and then that's the whole thing. So let's give it a try. So, taking the wiring off the horn right now. Pushing this out of the way. That should be good. Things that need to come off on this side. This side is completely removed. Ah. Oh, we got this line right here. Oh, that's great. Oh, just need to cut it off. <laughs> Oh, I need to remove the hood latch too. Uh, ah, this is annoying. It's supposed to go a little bit smoother than this.
much has to come off since we're replacing this board here. So, Much is coming off. All right, so this is now officially one hundred percent disconnected. Let's get it out of the way. I'll end up rebuilding this one in a little bit. Don't need it in the way right now. All right. So now your front end's completely exposed here, which is perfect because now I can fix things that I need to fix in here and replace everything in a lot easier manner. You guys all up in here. So you can see here we're gonna need new o-rings for the fill injectors. That's not good. So we're gonna have to replace all that. If you come down this way, you see there's a coolant leak right here on my lower radiator hose and from my thermostat right over there. We go this way to the oil cooler. We're on here, you'll see there's another oil leak right there. I mean, coolant leak. Now, if you come this way, all the way in the back, I know it's hard to tell, but there's a crankcase line that just snapped, so that all has to be replaced. Uh, since I'm here, I'm also going to be replacing both motor mounts on the front. The intake manifold has to come off. These uh, cloth, cheap, like, OEM hoses here have to all be replaced. So, valve cover, gasket, coil packs, not coil packs, but spark plugs, coil packs are fine. Um, the breather valve, the, all that stuff has to be replaced. I just found another crack right here on this hard pipe. So, I don't know what I'm going to do to fix that. I'll figure that one out. Um, I actually got new fuel lines. Not these, but the entire one that goes to the tank. Uh, since my wife hit the uh, hit a brick and sheared off the lines underneath the car. So, oh man. Got a lot of work. A lot of work. And who knows what else I'll find once I keep going and digging. I just removed the uh, lower radiator hose and the housing and you can see how bad the coolant leak was. I mean, it's pretty gnarly. It looks like it was starting from back here somewhere. I don't know. Kind of weird. But, yeah, that's going to get replaced. Uh, we're replacing the whole entire thing actually. Uh, the hose still looks really, really in good condition, but I'm just... I don't know, I don't feel comfortable just reusing this, so I have already ordered a replacement. Um, it's on its way. 
should be here around noon. So that's now removed. Now we got to work on the manifold because this has to, all has to come out too now. Now, like on a Mark IV, it's very, very similar. It's got the same bolt pattern across the bottom. Um, so the first thing we need to do is actually remove the fuel rail and the injectors before anything else can come out. Um, so for the, let's see here, for the fuel rail here, or the injectors, I've never actually removed them here on this car, so I'm very, actually very curious on how we can do this. So it looks like first we've got to remove the cam sensor. So, fly head, these little clips, I'll show you in just a moment, they, they just come on right on. I'm actually pretty happy with this right now. Not much effort needed to take this off. There's that. To show you what I just did, um, move you guys up a little bit higher. See here, this right here, you just squish down and you pull up. Uh, I used a I used the valve cover as my pry and just pushed it and pushed it in just with more tension than a normal hand, and it popped right off. Pretty easy. So now the fuel rail, just like a Mark IV, has got Allen portions. Let me get you guys a better angle. Hold on. So here, there's one, two, uh, two bolts pretty much, and then this pretty much whole fuel rail. There's a vacuum line right here. Uh, just pull it, pull it. It's really not in the way of anything. Um, my only concern here. I actually don't see one yet. So yeah, just take those two bolt, uh, those two, to get that out of the way, and then we'll show you what to do next. So they're held together by Allen bolts, and it uses a number five, I believe. Yep, number five. And then there's a trick to this. Well, obviously you don't have much leverage to do this, so what I do is I grab a socket into the actual Allen. And it gives me all the tension I need. I mean leverage I need. about these Allen wrenches from AutoZone, they're magnetic, pretty dope. So now, once the two bolts are removed, and you got that vacuum line disconnected, the injector should just pop right out, and that was way too easy. Yeah, I'm going to need new O-rings for sure. Uh, pull them aside. The next thing is this coolant line here. Obviously, going to be in the way. And that one is bolted on on the inside of here. So, we got to figure out an easy. So, there's a trick one. This is a trick one, guys. Um, because that coolant, this coolant line is metal. And it bolts onto a metal flange behind the head. 
I hate this one. This one is really, really annoying because of the way it's mounted in place, and it's easily damaged. Like when I mean easily damaged, it's just way too easy to damage it. Um, it's held together by two 10 millimeter bolts. So, we're going to try, we're going to remove this uh, hose right here, so this coolant hose right here is going to be removed, and that will get that one out of the way, and then we're going to take off this coolant hose here, so let's do that. Move this guy out of the way. Oh, we got water. I'll just keep it there. I'm not gonna do anything. And this is the next one. Sorry, I'm blocking the view. Pain in the ass hose. Now this one is the oil oil cooler hose right here. Now this one is very famous for leaking. That's great. All right, so oil cooler line. This little hose has been removed now. Um, so the next thing is the two 10 millimeter bolts back there. Now I'm pre-warning you right now, just because there's a bunch of vacuum lines right here, and I mean a lot. It is uh, just got awful. So. Uh, remove your coolant reservoir first and then get yourself an extension to reach the ten, two 10 millimeter bolts that way you can avoid putting your hand in here and damaging anything all right so now that we remove the uh, coolant expansion tank here or coolant reservoir whatever you guys want to call it this gives you almost a full straight shot to the uh, To the actual, let's see, um, well that's great, there we go, to the uh, metal line that bolts in, uh, I'm going to get you guys a view of that, okay, so let's go, you guys can see, there it is. 
There's a bolt there and then one right above it. So that's the middle line that you need to unbolt. I just removed the two um, two bolts on the hard line. Now I can actually take just take the hard line off. So it's only one five millimeter Allen bolt to hold this line. And then do a wiggle here. lines out. It looks like this had a coolant leak too. You guys can see that there. So now this exposes everything that's going to look like pretty much a pain in the rear to take off. So So for the manifold to come off, because that's the next piece that needs to come off is our intake manifold. Uh, make sure we disconnect the throttle body, idle air or the air temperature sensor uh, before anything else goes. So, vacuum lines, vacuum lines, vacuum lines. I might have to do a, a delete for this car, man. Because holy shnikes, there's so much stuff in here. <laughs> but the car's not tuned, so I can't do that. Not yet, though. So here's this vacuum this vacuum line this one right here just actually I'm gonna it's already broken so I'm just gonna let that slide off I don't want to damage it anymore uh, this this one right here if you guys see my hand this one goes underneath the manifold the manifold to this little hose here so we're going to replace that one it's already cracking really bad here so that'll be another vacuum line to be fixed and then let's see ha huh. I'll show you guys this see if it comes out <laughs> that's the uh, breather hose underneath the, in the on the crank so that's that's done let me see here and that one's gonna be tricky to take out because we don't want to take chunks out of it and dump it into the block so that's why we need to take the manifold out to replace it. <laughs> I'm trying to 
see there's a lot of vacuum. I wish there was a way you can unbolt them. Well, oh yeah, there is a way. There's two brackets, two bolts underneath. I mean, I guarantee there is a way to simplify this whole setup too. I mean, just gotta think about it like a Mark IV. A lot of this can be like removed, but since we actually smog this car, I'm gonna gonna have to say new. No. So I count three. Three ten millimeter bolts underneath the manifold. That's what I see for the moment. I'm gonna try. Hey, you're not, bud. One, one little 10 mil. Break it loose, looks like you can actually put your finger in there and Sorry if I get in the way guys, but you don't need to see this part. I'm just explaining what's going on. Number three is tricky. So now I took the three bolts from underneath. There's a big uh, bolt that holds a bracket right here uh, for the manifold. I guess it's more like a brace for the manifold. Um, took that one off. Uh, there's two 10 millimeters, uh, 10 millimeter nuts on the actual manifold itself. Remove those first. And then everything else is a five millimeter Allen. Now, keep in mind, this is the first time these bolts has ever been removed since I've owned this car. Like, five, five years. So, they're on here really tight. So, I'm using a little cheat stick here.
Hey, Pa. You need some help? You got it? My neighbor. Super cool, dude. Now this one's going to be a little, this one has a bracket to hold the dipstick. You're going to need to um, pull the dipstick out for this one, okay guys? This, the dipstick has to come out. The whole tube. So we're going to actually uh, sand down and clean up the manifold and valve cover because uh, they've been overdue for some cleaning. If you guys ever need to do the intake manifold or the breather system, do everything that I'm doing. It's only going to cost you about 100 150 bucks for all your parts. Save yourself the headache and trying to redo it later again because it is a pain. I'm telling you that right now in the behind to do this. Now... Try to pull out your dipstick tube without breaking it. Now that's going to be a... True test here. Line. One more. Oh shit! I heard something break. So I was tugging on this hose here. thing with this car it's another one it's another thing so I don't even know what the most of the stuff goes to to be honest with you um, I mean I know this is for the brakes but yeah <laughs> So, now we're actually in the innards of the 1.8T AWN Passat. You guys can see that. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty clear. 
So now we just we just removed intake manifold. The lower radiator hoses right here where, where the thermostat now is here. Um, so this pipe right here has to be replaced. This has a metal pipe that goes into a rubber T and then it goes into these lines right here. So what broke was here, this uh, crankcase one. So we're going to have to try to pray to sweet baby Jesus and remove these two hoses. This one will be fine. This is more of a concern right here is this guy right here. Remove this guy without breaking it and get the new one new crank hose coming in in a little bit and get that swapped so whenever a gasket is removed or a big portion you cannot reuse these these are officially trash gaskets are one-time use you can never put this back on It, you might as well give this sucker a good cleaning. So you grab your flathead. You'll see right here. It's a metal hook pin right here. And then Grab what's remaining and pull it straight up. You see, there's chunks already. Oh, crap. And already. figure out a way to suck all that out before it decides to make more of a mess into your engine and that's why you guys need to replace that as soon as possible so that's done <laughs> oh, that's out. So the next thing we're doing is valve cover.
What's really easy about the valve cover, it's just 10 millimeter bolts around the whole front. Uh, get that sucker the timing cover a little loose. Don't need to take it off. But since you're here, I mean, give it a little peek. Look at the condition of the belt. I don't see anything funky with it, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Did cricket. <laughs> um, so again, you're gonna need to do your five millimeter bolts. One, two, three, four. Uh, the ones on the side; those are your main PVC bolts, or AKA your smog stuff. Jeez. That's all good. One just stripped. anymore. So I got to make my baggies right now. So I got my intake manifold baggie. I'm going to have my cooling system baggie. So let's get that done. Morning everybody. And we are on day two of the B5.5 Passat overhaul. And I have to make a trip to AutoZone to get some vacuum lines because you can see there's a lot of vacuum lines that we need to fix and replace. So, let me get all this stuff out of the way for you guys. So, you'll see these are the OEM vacuum lines right here since they have the cloth material on them. We're going to have to replace those. Uh, this is one for the combi valve. So, from here all the way over here to this sensor. Then we have another one here. This is the one that goes on the manifold. And more than likely, this is for the N80 uh, sensor or N249 because it looks like the uh, diverter valve plugs into this one as well. Uh, so this has to be replaced. And then you'll see here, this is the new lower breather setup. Uh, this is the original hoses right here. So we might have to actually go match these up and get something new. So we need to get these to replace as well. I'm going to have to go find something like this. This looks like a 3 8 or 3 quarter hard pipe. So we're going to jerry rig some of this stuff um, to repair it. But a lot of this other stuff looks like it's pretty good or safe. If not, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be buying a bunch of extra just random uh, PVC hoses or yeah, P 
PVC hose, uh, which will withstand the heat and oil. A lot of people don't understand that a lot of people try to use like uh, coolant hoses, and what happens with coolant hoses with heat and oil, they collapse, or they get really soft and they bubble. Um, I don't want to do this again. I don't want to do this again for years, so we're going to have to get uh, that type of hose, like I said, a PVC hose, or PCV hose, um, to prevent this from happening or doing it again months down the road or even years. This is a lot of work. If you guys don't see that, <laughs> so let, let's get to work because I'm going to head out to AutoZone and pick up my stuff. See you guys soon. Alright, so we're back now. <clears throat> so I went and picked up uh, 11 30 seconds uh, PV, PCV hose and uh, 3 8 PCV hose so I can actually try to repair as much of this stuff as I can as I go through it. Um, I have a bunch of assorted different sizes clamps here that we're going to use throughout the repair procedure here. Um, if you have some of the factory clamps, keep those. Those are very, very important. These guys work really well. Um, oh, good thing I put a zip tie on that. So, you're going to need a couple couple clamps. One for your uh, breather elbow here from the crankcase. So there's one here. You're going to need one from the metal pipe that's down here. You can see where my finger is at. There's a metal pipe that goes here all the way over to the, the valve cover. Um, so we need to replace the or get new clamps for those because these had uh, these still had the factory clamps on them So and I know for a fact it's never been serviced uh, These as well had factory clamps on them So I know I need to get a new clamp new clamp new one here If you don't see any rips or tears on the factory hoses don't swap out the hose um, Since these have the proper bends to actually get to where they need to get to easier uh, the only time I recommend swapping out the uh, the the hose is if it's already torn or just really badly damaged. Now this one, this clamp isn't doing its job anymore. It's lost its force. So that one's gone. I'll just add another. I'll hook up this guy back in here. Now you'll know that I'm not tightening everything down, I'm just getting everything settled to where I need it. And once it's ready, we'll tighten stuff down. So now I need a clamp here and here. So. Now that we clamped everything, get your O-ring in place. Now remember, I didn't tighten anything down yet, and the reason for this because I got to be able to route this where it's supposed to go before you actually do the installation. So. This is a tricky one because you got to get the metal pipe in first. Not to bend it. So kind of use two hands. If not, pull out the lower pipe. Loosen this clamp a bit more. There we 
go. So that one's in. Now you want to move as much as you can out of the way because you'll see how this is routed. It's routed underneath here. And this will be routed kind of the same way. Because this, uh, this one goes on the manifold, this goes underneath the manifold. Um, one of these wires. This also bolts underneath the manifold with three 10 millimeters, like that. And this is your uh, diverter valve hose. So I kind of just tuck it out of the way. So the next thing is. Uh, once you have all this placed, this one over here, this is the one that goes onto the nipple here, the valve cover. Now I'm only getting you guys uh, situated because I still have to do the valve cover gasket. I already unbolted all the bolts, I've taken off all the bolts uh, and nuts off of it. Uh, you have to take the two hard lines off on this side. And then just ball cover comes right off. Um, so what's next is like this routing of this hose. I don't like. We're gonna route everything underneath. Uh, but if everything is comfortably in place without it rubbing or touching anything, you can start tightening down your clamps. That way you know you are you are secure. Make sure all your hoses and your check valves are nice and snug. Give me a longer flathead. And then start tightening down these clamps. Now what you want to do is not make them super tight, just snug. Because what's gonna happen if you make them too tight? You're going to dig into the rubber and you're going to tear the rubber and that's just going to defeat the purpose of doing this job. What I like to do is if you can get your finger underneath a clamp, put your finger underneath it and then you can put pressure onto it and that way it doesn't spin on you. Now this one that we're repairing right now is the lower breather hose or the PCV system. This system only has one check valve and that's on the actual uh, breather portion right here where my finger is at. Uh, give me a second. So you'll see right here there's a clamp. This goes to the metal pipe. That's done. You don't need to touch that right now. And you'll see here, clamp, move over, follow my finger, there, there's a check valve, and then go over to there. And then this goes back to here. This is a PCV uh, hose, um, valve here. Uh, I got that brand new as well. Move it over, fish it over, and then here we are. This goes underneath the intake manifold. You're done with that system. Uh, plus the lower crankcase pipe here that's going to go in this guy. That just goes in, cram it in, and that's it. Um, that repair is done, which is great because that was completely broken on this car. Uh, there's a metal clip that goes right in here. You guys can see that. You just push it in, and that's it. So now we're going to repair this right here this whole entire fun problem 
Uh, I have a check valve that's already cracked. Uh, this suction pump needs to be replaced. Um, this is broken. Uh, this check valve looks good. Uh, so it looks like we just have to replace this one and this check valve. So these two. The thing that sucks is though we have these factory clamps that have to come off. And then we have to put new clamps onto it. And I'm running low on clamps. <laughs> so it looks like I'm going to need one, two, three, four clamps for this repair. Actually no, five right here but that's what we got to do now this is going to be a very very tricky one the reason why there's a hard line here and you're going to have to pry on this stuff without damaging it I use a very 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 small screwdriver or a flathead screwdriver and what you're going to do is you're going to kind of get into here inside the clamp just like that and with your other hand you're going to hold on to it and you're going to pry left and right until that clip comes off. If you see right here where this is at, there's a little uh, tab here where this is tightened onto and it's curved to the to the left. That means you need to pry to the left so this clamp can come off and lose its force. Um, same thing over here. These are a little bit trickier. Uh, these don't, oh, we do have it. Um, so whatever way this little tab is pointed is the actual direction you want to pull the uh, tab um, without trying to damage anything at the same time. It's going to be difficult. You're going to have a lot of trial and error, unfortunately. Um, you will break stuff. I'm telling you this right now. That's why I purchased all of this prior and I bought extra hoses prior just to be safe if I have to patch anything uh, to get back the correct, pretty much the correct stuff. In location so let's get to work so first things first the suction pop one like I was saying you can use your hand to hold on to it if not and then you'll see I got some leverage now and what I like to do once it's already there pry underneath once there's a space for it These are hands down the best clamps you can get, but they're also the worst clamps you can get because you can damage stuff so easily by trying to take them off. That's clamp number one. I don't think I have to replace that one. This check valve has to go. So what I'm doing here is I'm twisting on the inside of this a little bit so I can get some prying force and then twist to the left or the right. Once I got that, I got a gap here, pry, and that's it. Now as I'm working, I'm talking. So what I'm going to do is because I don't want to forget how everything's wi uh, not wired, but uh, routed. Every piece that I take off, I install my new one at the same time. That way I'm not forgetting a part or something. This one's funky. This one got jacked up. Okay, so this one is actually backwards.
Gotta do this with finesse and patience. Sometimes I don't have a lot of when I'm doing repairs. Sometimes I just want to just rip it all out and start again. But for this car, since it's staying stock, I can't do that. Okay, so. This is what they call a suction pump or valve. I got a new one of these, so I'm going to go grab that. So now, here's the new one. Now, you're going to need to get um, clamps. So, we need one, two clamps for this one. Now, I'm going to try to use the tension clamps, which are the factory ones. I like to use these if I ever can. They're one of my favorite clamps. that guy. Now I have a little one. Let me see if I have a small one for that one. Nope, just a tad too big. I wish I could find you guys a better angle so you guys can see this while I'm doing the repair. But I'll fly by it like I do always and show you guys what's going on. So now it's this 90 degree that needs to be replaced. So maybe I can give you guys a close look at this. So here's the little thing right here. So we're going to grab, pry, pry, just enough. And then you'll see right here, just bend it or twist it. And there we go. Much better. Twist it and pull. Let's see if we can find a clamp. Ooh, I got lucky. Here's one that works. So another tension clamp that I can use. I don't even know the real name of this 
clamp. I just call it a tensioning clamp because it makes sense to me. <clears throat> nice and snug and tight. Tight like a tiger. So that's all good. So now we need a check valve here since this one's damaged. Oh, this one's a Y. This one has a Y on it. Good thing I had one that was saved that was actually really, really good. Um, so this one's going to work for me. So this check valve right here, where my finger is touching, this is actually a T check valve. So I actually had one spare one that was off of the engine that didn't actually had a plug on it that it wasn't being used for anything. So I'm going to use that one for this one. So this one's going to be tricky because this has a really tiny hose on it that's really janky, and I don't really want to damage this one. Got me good. So there's that out. So this one has a little tiny, tiny clamp. I'm probably not going to use a clamp on this one because this one looks like it's got a lot of force. Yep. use one on that one. I have a lot of different style clamps. So hopefully this one works for me. and snug. Okay. okay. So this one right here got damaged. This one had a T on it, like this. So I got to repair this one too, uh, since the T got pretty much destroyed in the process. So I gotta take off all these clamps and pray to sweet baby Jesus that uh, these don't break. If not, the good thing is I got all new hoses for this, so I might end up just repairing and putting new hoses on this, on these right here, because um, these are really, really bad. Like these are bad, corroded. Um, let me see if I got a right size T for these guys. So I bought this one right here. From Dorman, part number four seven three four nine. Uh, this one's pretty cool because you can just cut off the the thickness that you need for the hose, and then pop it in. And this will be a much better repair than using those universal white tees. Uh, this goes actually underneath the intake manifold as well. Um, so, next thing I'm going to have to do is get this guy installed. Is that 
turn this one around. Push down. That right there is a fix. And what I should have got before I um, left AutoZone, I should have got some degreaser and clean this all up too, but oh well. Life is life. <sighs> okay, so now the next thing is we're going to cut, break this, not break it, but um, take off this T because I want to measure the size of this hole, um, or this line. go. So now that's off. Now since this T is broken on the inside, you're going to have to stretch the hose kind of like in a circle. Clean it off so that way you can, once you get that, get a little, get your vice grip here. Let's see if you can get some plastic and give it a yank just like that and yank that sucker out so pay attention to the hose if it's cracking a little bit it's okay these hoses don't move and they're not under any crazy amount of pressure so here's that Now we're going to use our little universal T here, just like that, and then we're going to find the fitment for it. So we have to cut off this piece right here, and this will be the exact size we need. Pretty cool. See, just like that. So now that I got my T, custom made T fix made, I'll run my hose into that. Just like that, pretty cool. And actually, it's working actually much better than the one I was in here. So, cool, easy fix, guys. So, let's repeat the same process here. Now, this DIY will work very, very well on any. Passat and Audi with the 1.8T because this is very very they have a very similar longitudinal uh, engine base so this is a 2003 Passat so if you guys are watching this and you're like man I wish I could do this with my Audi well guess what you can they're pretty much identical give or take a couple bolts here and there but you wouldn't be able to tell them apart honestly Now this is going to be very tricky because this one seems very brittle. This is on a on a plastic line here, so I got to be very cautious, and more so than I have been.
I mean, oh no. <laughs> What I didn't want to happen, happened. Stupid valve broke inside or so now I gotta try to dig it out without damaging it. You got some nice thin needle nose pliers. I'm trying to dig the sucker out. So this is the part where I'm going to say screw it. And we're going to use some new hose for this one. I know all you guys are thinking, why didn't you just think about that before? Well, sometimes I don't want to think that way. You know. Of a break because this is gonna break. I know it's gonna break, it's already wanting to break. It's not being very friendly right now. Okay, let me see if I can dig a little bit in here. Okay. Before I make it worse, grab a box cutter. Just cut the hose. Done. <sighs> now I get my new hose. Uh, we're going to be using 1132nd size hose, which is a tad too small. I mean, too big, but we got clamps to fix that. It's just a tad. I mean, like it's it's got. A, it's got there, but it's just not enough. So we're gonna have to cut right here. So now that I have this, let's see if I can use these uh, factory clamps again. Since this is a larger diameter. Look at that, nice and snug with that new clamp on there. This one will be really nice too. So there's that fix. Whew. I don't know if you guys were on the edge of your seats, but I was. <laughs> Alright, so that's repaired. This is repaired. 
I don't even know where vac what, what vacuum line attaches to this one. I know there's one. I know it goes on the manifold. Oh, it's on the manifold. Ah. Right here. This one actually attaches to this part of the manifold right here. This little 90 degree. So. All right, so now we know these two are in the manifold. This one goes to the manifold. This one goes to the manifold. That's pretty much everything that goes underneath the manifold. Um, we repaired pretty much all these lines. Now here are the tricky ones. Um, this one I ripped earlier because I needed to find a diameter for it. But it's the one that sits right here. And this one literally is in like the worst spot possible for you to actually um, do a repair. So get your handy dandy little tiny little screwdriver and try to pry the sucker off. The nice thing is this is on a metal line or metal uh, barb so you can actually just not give any poops and you can pry that sucker off. Now this line here uh, went from here to the manifold underneath it. Um, see here again here's the manifold uh, there's a line here that that one goes to um, see right here that that vacuum line that I took off from underneath there and goes to here and then there's a vacuum line from here this one right here is for the fuel regulator uh, it's literally just three inches of line You got that one. See this one I was talking about? That one? That's this one right here. This one goes to here. And you have another one. This one right here. This one goes here. This one goes here. I have one. One odd one. That goes to something somewhere around here. I'll find it right now. Oh, no, no. Okay, so this, this one right here, this 90 degree in the bottom, goes underneath. This one right here goes on here, and right here in the manifold. This little one that's angled is this one right here. Um, fuel regulator, this is the one for the check valve that's right here. This one is the one that we're fixing right now. That's it. I know it's confusing, but hopefully we can see everything in detail while we put it all back together so here's this I'm gonna 
over lengthen them. Um, I bought five feet of uh, what size five and thirty seconds vacuum line, which is just right a thick, uh, right amount of thickness. So pretend the manifold is here. So we're gonna go all the way under and over. So I always overcompensate in length just because it's just safe. So I'm gonna do about two feet of material. And remember, it's this is like a dollar a foot, so I'm not gonna cry about losing a couple inches of length. There's no check valve in that. This just goes straight to the manifold. And that's it. Now there's one more vacuum line right here. Uh, this is on the sensor, so this one's a little trickier. You might have to cut this because this one actually has a, a plastic fitting on it. And this one goes to the combi valve. It sits right over here on the back of the head. This one has a metal fitting so you can get your flathead screwdriver and kind of pry that sucker off. that. Um, copy the length. I would recommend it. I mean, since it's about the same, so there we are. Look at that. My five feet of hose is the exact amount that I needed. Great. So this one, again, this is smaller than the uh, other one, so I don't really use a clamp on these. If you guys are worried about a clamp, Grab a little zip tie, a little tiny zip tie, and zip tie that in place. Zip ties, you'd be, nylon can resist heat immensely, so I'm not concerned about it failing. And then route it back under, underneath, on the bottom of this, don't route it over it, underneath it. So that's it. I'm going to grab some zip ties and just zip tie these little ones just to be safe. And that's it. You can actually repeat, use zip ties on a lot of these um, clamps if you want to clean up the bay. I use a lot of zip ties in my, uh, in my, my vacuum lines just because they don't require a lot of tension or pressure. Um, since the, I make them smaller than factory so they fit in there really snug. Um, and I don't worry about it. So I'm going to go grab some zip ties be right back. Alright, so now all the vacuum lines are pretty much set in stone. We have a new intake manifold gasket. Um, these are all done. All these lines over here are set. Uh, I got a couple more check valves coming around noon. Uh, I might replace uh, this one down here. It looks pretty bad. Uh, I got a couple O-rings I need to get uh, since I gotta wait for them a little bit later today. Uh, I got this coolant leak down here that I might figure out where it's coming from. But that's it for the vacuum line assembly down here, which is. You gotta understand, it is a disaster. So the next thing we're gonna do is the thermostat. And thermostat housing. So I saw I pulled a rag out of there. 
Uh, usually I put a rag in here, a clean one obviously, uh, to soak up all the coolant that's inside that chills right here at the bottom of the block. And what you want to do is clean this as best you can. Now, if you got nothing to clean it with, grab a razor and try to scrape. Using a razor helps a lot. And don't use the razor straight on. Use it at as hard angle as you guys can and then scrape. Uh, you want it as clean and smooth as possible. That way you don't make um, any grooves into the metal. That way you'll prevent any leaks. If you're worried about having leaks on here, uh, you can put a tiny little bead of RTV around the actual uh, cool, uh, thermoset housing uh, to prevent any future leaks down the road. But the downside of that is you won't know if you have an O-ring failure. So it kind of goes both ways on that one. So let's see here. I'm going to grab a razor and start cleaning that. See this? That's the thermostat. Um, you'll see here, nice and clean. Now, obviously, I can't get it 100%. In here, you cannot touch that with the razor blade. This is this you clean as best you can with your hand, with your with your rag, and that's it. Then you're gonna mount your thermostat, and then the O-ring sits on top of that, and then the housing. Got it. Now, the next thing is your thermostat. Thermostats only go in one way, guys, so and now I'll show you. If I put it in this way, and I put it in this way, which way do you think it might go? Now, usually the deep part always goes into the block. So the thermostat goes in first, and you'll notice it sits here in really, really nice and flat. Doesn't matter which direction the thermostat is sitting, it, it's really matter. But the round domey part is always sticking out. Then you lay your O-ring in. Your thermostat housing only mounts one way, so you're gonna go this way. Liking mounting right now. Let's see. That laying flat. I'm gonna try a different. I'm gonna try my factory. Thermostat housing really quick. So it is the right part. I just gotta stop being a wimp and man push harder. So what I'm doing is I'm using the, uh, the the bolts here to guide me in.
smaller one. Now I'm doing everything by hand, you guys can see, I'm not using the actual ratchet yet. What I'm trying to look for is being symmetrical as it lays down. If everything looks flat, then use your ratchet and make it hand tight because we got to torque these down. and hand tighten that's no more than that we're not going to torque those down yet because we still got a lot of work to do outside of this before we can even start torquing turkey tw torquing things down <laughs> twerking <laughs> um this is kind of has like the the pins set up so to lock it in place You guys know what I mean by the pin setup. This guy right here, he's lock them in place. So don't lose any of those if you have any. So now that we got the lower coolant line. I mean the thermostat housing and that. We can actually uh, mount our uh, lower radiator hose, which we got a brand new one. Lucky enough, it came with the new pin. So, if you lost yours, you lucked out because uh, these usually don't come with the brand new pin on these guys. So. This hose goes to the coolant reservoir. This one it goes in too easily. That's really weird. Well, we'll see. So this line right here goes into your coolant reservoir down below. This one right here goes into the lower radiator portion. So there's that. And I'm not feeling this a lot. But it's locked in, so hopefully it doesn't leak. Alright, so that's all taken care of. Now, finally, we can get to the final steps. We're going to put the new clip in. Um... We're going to do the valve cover, intake manifold, we're going to clean this all out. Um, we're going to clean up the uh, intake manifold here, I mean the valve cover, we're going to paint it. Is due for some refreshing in this engine bay. So we'll get back to you guys in a little bit. Because we still got to do next uh, injectors. We're going to do the new O rings on them. We got new spark plugs, new valve cover gasket, and we still got to service this side of the engine and uh, fix all of the vacuum lines and uh, PCV lines on this side too, so stay tuned more for that. If you guys see over here, 
before I cut you guys off and get back to doing cleaning. The valve cover, I already showed you guys how to do that, how to remove it. But, I didn't show you how to get to these guys. So there's these hard lines. There's 10 millimeter, I don't know, 6 millimeter Allens across here. Once you take all those off, you still have to take them off the heat shield. There's a eight, two 8 millimeter bolts here. Once you do that, there's these two um, uh, hoses right here on the combi valve. One upper and lower. You have to break loose the clamps on those. And then maybe you're going to end up breaking the uh, metal line that goes here, which I ended up doing. There's a hard plastic piece that goes here at 90 degree. Um, and you'll see that in the video uh, prior, but there's a metal piece that's cracked already, so I didn't care for breaking it. Um, you're going to break it when you take it off because it's just going to snap. It's, it's hard plastic, but you can get a new one. Um, I already ordered my new one, so it won't be here until later today. But because I knew I foresaw that I was going to break more than what I expected, so that's it. Get some carburetor cleaner and some degreaser and start just spraying down the area and clean up your area. That way, when you actually start driving your car again, you have clean areas. So if you do have oil leaks, you can fix them as fast as you can. That way, you can find them and detect them faster. Okay, guys, see you guys in a little bit. Peace out. All right, the rest of my parts came in, so I'm going to show you guys how to do the motor mounts on your 2003 or 2002 to 2005 Audi B5 or Passat B5.5 uh, 1.8T motor mounts. They're very, very simple. Um, number one, you're going to need to jack up your car. Jack it up about two inches. Um, I mean, the engine. Jack the engine up about two inches. Inch and a half, two inches. But paying attention back here that it does not hit the firewall. You just go up, 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 and just get it there. Uh, what's going to happen next? There's a 13 millimeter on top and on the bottom. Just take those off on the top and on the bottom. Then you're going to grab another 13 millimeter. You got one here and here for the sway bar. There's two of them on the end. What it's going to do is going to let you drop the sway bar out of the way and then you just got to drop this uh, bracket here uh, you can do the other one as well while you're at it uh, it's going to be an 18 and a 16 millimeter if you guys can see that 18 18 and 16 uh, just take them break them pretty loose break them loose go about half an inch or halfway out on the threads push it down and it'll let you pull out the bracket after that, repeat the process in reverse, and you got your motor mounts in. I mean, it's super easy. Um, as long as you're supporting the engine with a jack with a piece of wood, so the wood does not ding or damage the uh, oil pan on the bottom. That's, I mean, I'm not kidding you. That's as easy as it gets to do a motor mount on these cars. Uh, I love it. Uh, my motor mounts are here, the old ones, and you can already see they're starting to wear a little bit. I mean, there were cheap replacements. There were 20 bucks a piece for uh, my MEI Miley. Really, really good. These are um, German parts and they're OEM parts. These are not cheap aftermarket ones. Uh, that's it for the motor mounts on this car. Uh, and then just retorque everything back down. Go online, look up your torque specs, and torque them down. I mean, it's really, really simple. There you go. On this side, this side actually goes higher than the um, than the other side. So this one you can actually slip in without taking off the bracket. You still need to remove the sway bar so you can do the other bracket on the other side. But that's it. Now that you guys can see, there's the mount in place on this side. There's the mount in place on that side. And remember just to take off that bracket on the left side and on the right side you're good just drop it and it'll slide right in so new motor mounts in under 30 minutes not too shabby but it's only easy when you have the front end off remember that front end removal uh, where my rest of my parts like I said are here so we're gonna start doing uh, the inside of the car and get this taken care of. All right, so now we're at the valve cover. Since we pulled it out earlier, now we're actually gonna service it. 
uh, I had a rag over it so we didn't have to damage anything so or get any debris in it so the first thing is first once you took it off the valve cover by first removing the metal lines here and then taking the valve cover off these kind of go off symmetrically they're a pain in the butt so because they're like perfectly lined up I hate taking these off you don't have to be very gentle with it since you're removing and replacing uh, anytime you take off the valve cover or the valve cover gasket it is a one-time use gasket guys so you take it off you're done with it you can no longer use it so toss it and forget it all right that's done now with the clean rag go around the seam cleaning everything if you see any RTV, like here, here, and over here in these corners, you're going to have to scrape those off before you install your gasket. Uh, the reason being because those, you have to put RTV in those corners so it doesn't leak. Uh, I don't know where my blade went. There it is. Now, I mean, you literally put a smidge inside of here, and that's it. You don't have to do much of anything. Just going to clean everything up and scrape off the old stuff if you can. Try not to let it go into the actual can or into the inside the engine itself. So I don't know where all my screwdrivers went. I just had them all here. Did you hate that? There's our TV in here. Now I like to use black RTV. Uh, if you can get your hands on OEM stuff, use it. That stuff is amazing. Uh, and it will work much better than black RTV. But RTV is very black RTV is more available to you locally than the OEM stuff, so. Sometimes I can get it, sometimes I can't. So that's all cleaned up. Oh, there we go. All good. So now, with all that cleaned up, roll your finger against up. See, there's like a little layer right there. Yeah, whoever um, 
my buddy at Cotter's, that's who it was, who did the valve cover gasket literally five years ago. Did a really good job too. Can't argue that. All right. So, RTV locations. Here, here, here. This corner, and in the little moon here. And when I mean just dab it, you just grab it and dab it like that. You don't, you don't like pour it on there. You just get your finger with it and just smear it in those corners. That's all you need to do. Don't try to get all crazy and put a lot and make it all pretty doesn't need to be that way it just needs to be slapped in there a little bit and that's it here's the uh, ultra black RTV by Permatex I've used this a couple times, but it's dried up too much on the little thing here, so I have to cut a hole in it and apply it. So remember, not much of anything goes there. Smidge, just like that. Smidge. seal down here this one's a tricky one since it's smooth you want to cover the whole surface with a very thin layer just like that There's that. Clean your hand. One last thing is clean the tube seals right here. Just the, just the outer rings right here. There's not much to these guys. That's it. We're going to be using a Victor Rins uh, gasket. Why you say Victorians? Because these are OEM suppliers for Volkswagen. These are probably the best gaskets you can get for your money. And it's worth the money, I guarantee you guys. So, these only go in one way. Uh, you can pick and choose which side, it doesn't really matter. Now this one only goes in one way as well. And you'll see here, here's the moon side. Uh, make sure it's clean of any debris. What you're going to do is lay down one side at a time, evenly. And then you're going to push it in. Push it down. Make sure everything's settled. And push it in the right corners where you put that RTV. Make sure that RTV is doing its job and setting. And then that's it. Get your valve cover, slap it on. We just painted it, so it's going to look pretty.
we did two coats of high temperature VHT high glossy black paint. So my wife loves black, so we're gonna keep it that way. And now for your bolts, if you made a baggie, use your baggie. Um, if not, I just did everything. I kept everything on the side. Now you want to do this as fast as you can or as quick as you can. First paint your valve cover, don't do it, and then try to put it on while it's wet. Remember to load up all your nuts uh, by hand. Don't try to put these on immediately. Just hand thread them. Make sure they're on correctly. Now, I haven't replaced the spark plugs on this because I showed you guys. You don't want to re pull them out yet because you can get debris and whatnot into the cylinders and you don't want that. That's why I'm doing that last. Now I'm only going a couple turns just so I can feel snug somewhere but we're not tightening them we're just getting them so the gasket can sit down and then we're actually going to do a proper sequence on them. Okay that's pretty much it for that we're not going to get any tighter than that. I think she's looking pretty already. I know I should have sanded down the valve cover, but believe me, it's a huge upgrade from what it was. So I'm not really complaining. I mean, this engine bay, if you guys saw earlier at the beginning of the video, it was pretty gross. So this is already a gigantic upgrade for it. So now I gotta go get my deep socket. And we're gonna tighten these down. Now these don't go down by very tight, usually about five to eight foot pounds. And what you want to do is kind of crisscross them. So start on one end, work your way across, on the other one, work your way across like that. So once you feel it go down, go to the next one, go to the next one, and work your way over. And then we're going to start from here now. So now it's all tight. Now you're going to do the whole pattern in reverse. Just nice and tight. Now to verify everything, go across like this, and not go too tight, just these gaskets don't go on very tight. If you over tighten them, they will leak. That's it. Valve cover is done. Let that sit. We're going to pull out the spark plugs and start doing the spark plugs now. Uh, since we're going with OEM spec plugs, I'm not going to have to change the, I'm not going to gap them. You just take them out, pop them in. 
Uh, I'm using uh, NGK laser double platinums. You cannot gap those anyways, even if you wanted to. So, just FYI. These are the plugs we're going to be using. Part number is uh, 6458 or PFR6Q. We're going down. I like to do a spark plug change when the engine is actually a little warm. I personally think it's a safer process, but since this car has been down now for a week, this thing needs to get up and running ASAP. So since my uh, spark plug tool doesn't have a magnetic pickup, we do it the uh, cheap way. Get a rubber hose, go all the way down, grab the tip, pull your plug out. Very, very simple. Man, yeah, these plugs were due. Give you guys a close up, but every single plug looked like that. Pretty worn out, I think. So now, a couple ways you guys can style, install plugs. I like to use copper NECs just to be safe so this stuff doesn't go in or get stuck. Permatex, NECs, I love copper uh, NECs, so I use this stuff religiously on spark plugs, and this stuff lasts forever. I've had this one tube for almost five years now. You just literally just dab a smidge in there. That's pretty much it, and then dump your plug down. This will prevent your plugs from getting stuck. We provide a really good contact surface as well. So I read, read. <laughs> Just to give you guys a quick comparison on the spark plugs. I mean, they've been in there for a minute, right? <laughs> These plugs run about 15 bucks a piece, and they don't have to be replaced for about 30,000 miles. So, technically, you can get a couple years out of them, depending on how you drive your car and how cheap you are with gas. And 
if your car doesn't run lean or rich, that's another thing. Um, running rich, it fouls up the plugs pretty quick. Uh, on my on my Mark IV, I run copper plugs because I can swap them out pretty much every other oil change since they get fouled up pretty quickly since the car runs um, pretty rich on the bigger turbo. And what I'm doing here is I'm just hand tightening them. I don't torque these down yet. I make sure they just thread in nicely all the way by hand and then I use my ratchet to tighten them down. I use my torque uh, torque spec procedure which is tight and then a, a quarter turn or up to a two inch turn pretty much. So start from the first right, from cylinder number four. So once you feel it actually hit the bottom right there and then I use about a quarter turn and that's it no more. You'll feel the plug hit the bottom. And then about an inch to two inches, no more. Not like a quarter turn, it's more like a eighth of a turn. Okay, and then that's it. And we're done with that. Now reinstall your coil packs. Clean them off if you can. You know everything else is so pretty. Might as well start prettying everything up. Okay. So that is now valve cover, spark plugs, and coil packs done on this portion. Now, since um, we're getting ready for the rest of this, all this back here is super grimy and dirty, so I don't know if I'm going to have an oil leak down the road. Personally, clean it up with some... Um, car cleaner get that all cleaned out that way when you start driving it and you see some new oil maybe you know where it's coming from maybe a bolt got loose or something got you know just damaged or something happened at least you can figure it out so do that next Now since I painted this right here, hopefully I didn't paint that surface because that's the ground surface for the wiring. Looks good, but I would recommend cleaning it just to be safe. Grab yourself a razor. Make sure the bolt is cleaned up as well underneath. Nice and clean. So I like to clean all my surfaces because Let's assume you put everything together 
and you turn on the car and nothing works. At least you know the electrical is taken care of. A clean ground is a happy ground. I love we say. And this will actually make it easier when you um, have to run the rest of the metal lines that are coming in soon. Okay, that's looking really good. I mean, I would probably clean this up later down the road, but I'm not going to do that today. All right, so we got some new parts. The hockey puck that goes right here, or right here, somewhere around here. I uh, got that replaced. We got this new white pipe that's coming in right now. Um, we got to throw away these plugs. Get this stuff out of the way. In my work area. <laughs> All right. So next procedure is actually the intake manifold gasket. Um, same thing. This only goes in one way. Never reuse an intake manifold gasket. It is a one-time use gasket as well. So, these are always a little tricky to install uh, because these two bolts on the side are like perfectly matched. They also match the holes almost perfect. So, it's a pain. Um, it's a very big pain procedure. So, the next thing uh, earlier we didn't finish because we were still getting things tidy up. Um, those are all tight, uh, tight, 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 tight. Okay, so we're missing the clip that goes here on the breather, lower crankcase breather. Uh, we got to tighten the two 10 millimeter bolts right here on the um, thermostat housing. These don't go on very tight. Uh, use it to about 10 to 12 foot pounds and you're done. Give it a wiggle, make sure there's nothing odd about it. If it goes in there snug, you're good. Now that we have all that taken care of, uh, start putting your motor mount bolts, uh, nuts back on. while everything else uh, pretty much gets settled in. Uh, pretty soon we're going to start, uh, we're going to do a turbo swap on this car. Um, probably a couple months down the road. We're going to go to a KO4. Uh, just because it's not smart to go to a stock turbo. KO4 with slightly bigger injectors. We're not going to go crazy. Just want something a little bit fun to drive for my wife. Because the Mark II is what's going to be crazy. That's her car. Once you have the valve cover set, you put your timing belt cover back on. Nice and snug. Getting close to getting this thing done. Uh, looks like I'm running out of recording time, so I have to unload all the videos and then reload more. 
so we can record more. Uh, we're gonna get ready to button up in a little bit. Uh, doo -doo -doo. All I'm trying to do is break all loose all that stuff and then clean it, give it a good clean. Old dipstick tube. New dipstick tube. Holy crap, has that neon. Oh, man. So, yeah, I mean, it's easy. Just grab it, yank it, pull it out. Every time you take out the manifold or you got to work on something, just swap out this tube. These break all the time. Okay? So just, be, to be safe, just swap it out. Don't be cheap. Just get rid of it. Pop in a new one. I mean, it's that easy. I paid, I think, like six bucks for this. Voila, you're done. Get your dipstick back in there. I have to clean that up. It <laughs> looks really dirty. <laughs> but yeah, new dipstick is like, wow. Look how pretty that looks. <laughs> Even though I'm probably never going to see it again, but whatever. You know, it's something. Trash, trash, trash. Alright, so it's time to do the hard lines on this side. And I got two new parts. Well, three, technically, this. So we have this one for one of the metal lines over here. This bad boy right here, the Y pipe for right here, and the hockey puck. These things are notorious for leaking right here from this seal, so swap it out. Save yourself a dirty engine bay. So now we need one, two, three clamps. And then this one goes on this side, just like that. So now that we have this all done, we can actually route our this hose right here, the one we had out here earlier. Nice and snug. So we need three clamps again. One, two, three. Let's get so those. See here, three clamps. They're actually uh, two different size clamps because it's a Volkswagen. So it's gonna want you to hate life for a little bit and be difficult. again there we go good thing this is brand new rubber so it's nice and flexible
Now position your clamps where they're easy to get to. And then you have a hockey your hockey puck here. And then you still have the the other hard pipe that goes underneath that. So we'll get to that in just a minute. But I mean it's already looking delicious and very nice in here. You know, with good repairs and not going cheap on stuff. Remember, because you want this to last you a couple more years, not be cheap and do this again in a couple months. A lot of work, so I'm not in the mood to doing this again. Especially on a Passat. If this was on a Mark IV, I would have been done in an hour. So easy on a Mark IV. Remember everyone, this DIY works on Audis and Volkswagens uh, with longitudinal uh, motors and 1.8T especially. Nice and snug. Now this one I haven't tightened yet because I don't know which way it's going to go yet. Keeping track of everything looks good. Now let's get the rest of the parts that we need. This is the hard pipe. We just gave it a cool little coat of paint, matching paint. And then this feeds into this. That 90 degree we were talking about. And then lines up like that. There's still another hard line, two hard lines that go underneath this. So we're not bolting anything in place. We're just getting everything mocked up so we can get everything nice and snug to get it taken care of. Because we've got to pay attention to where everything sits so nothing gets damaged. I mean, it's looking really good. So far, everything is uh, lining up, going in into place without giving us huge headaches. Now this is my headache coming soon, or these two on this side, because that one has the damaged uh, pipe. This is the one we're talking about here. Um, this one goes here, goes underneath this one, and lines up. with the heat shield now to prevent any damage try to get stuff hand like tighten in place kind of like you know mock I keep on saying I just mock everything up um, so this is the one we got to worry about right here. This is the one that's underneath the main metal pipe. That one um, had a hard line, uh, hard rubber hose, which is this 90 degree right here that we got from IMC. And this one right here um, gets really, really rock hard on, on here. So you're going to have to figure out how to pry off the old one. So 
now that I got that off, I just pried it off with the fly with my tiny screwdriver, flyhead screwdriver. This thing's been so useful during this DIY, it's ridiculous. Um, so you're gonna get this one. Oh no, this isn't the right size. This is the wrong size pipe. Holy shenanigans. Oh man. This thing's huge. It's the right angle, but it's the wrong size. Okay, well no worries. I'll figure out something in my, in my handy box right now. If not, I'll take the pipe with me and figure out something when I'm over there. Well, that's the 90 degree you got to worry about down the road. Um, right here is a T fitting that broke off, so we're going to fix this. Because that's a vacuum line we got to fix. And then there's another vacuum line right here that we need to fix too. There's a check valve that failed on us. So. Now we got to remember what direction this is. And these have arrows on it too to the motor, so you want to match that up. So I'll copy the arrow on here. That way everything gets done correctly. There's this one. And then this 90 degrees is what goes into here. Where's the junky clamp on that? So I'm going to use a new clamp. I forgot new clamps. I want this car running like I just bought it again. So, this is a weird setup here because this is the part of the intake side. I had to jerry rig my setup here because I'm going to have to figure out a better routing system in a little bit um, so I can route all this correctly. So, you're going to need to bolt down all your stuff here. Uh, remember where you put all your bolts at. I believe nothing gets in the way. Nope. Before you do that, I probably suggest tightening down the harder to reach ones. Just ran out of time recording, so be back in a little bit. I gotta offload all this video. All right, so we're here now. Moment of truth. Intake manifold, nicely painted, glossy black. I'm gonna like it. Um, remember your vacuum lines that you added and zip tied. So you have the ones down below. You have the ones that we repaired. And this one that goes across. So remember where everything is going because you don't want to lose them. So 
So the first thing we want to do is lay it down and we're not going to actually uh, mount it or bolt it in because we need to have some wiggle room. We need the wiggle room so it can actually um, We can actually bolt everything into place. So all you want to do is lay the manifold in place. That's it. Now remember the tube that we just installed. There's a bracket that goes across. Remember guys? This bracket goes underneath it and sits on top. So you got to remember that too. It's pretty important. So I would recommend cleaning this up before you actually install everything. So it looks pretty. So now we're now to routing the things that we completely took off. This vacuum line here is for the fuel regulator, which we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, this bracket, you actually have to put the dipstick together and everything and dump it all together with the manifold. It's kind of weird. Um, remember these two vacuum lines on this side, the ones from the suction pump and the one down below that we all replaced underneath. And then this is a coolant line that goes this way. And this one goes over here. Up there. So that's all good. We don't need to worry about that or this. Remember this one, this is that vacuum line that we swapped out with that new check valve. So that looks all nice and cozy there. So we got the new coolant, uh, not new, but yeah, the, the hard coolant pipe that goes on top. We haven't gotten to that yet because we need to make sure everything underneath the manifold is bolted into place. So you get your little baggie, your bolts, and you get to work. Remember, underneath was three 10 millimeter bolts. So, one, two, three. You're gonna have to start off by hand and then work your way. Okay, um, I showed you earlier how to do it, so I'm just gonna bolt it in place and then I'll be back in just All a right, moment. So, now those are nice and tight at the bottom. You're gonna use that big Allen bolt. That was on the side that actually holds a bracket right here and that's actually what lines up your your manifold correctly now you're just going to hand tighten that down because we still have to get everything bolted in to the manifold but we're not going to do that yet because we want to make sure underneath uh, if you remember there was that one hose it's a 90 degree that we had to fix with a T we got to push that in nice and Oh crap. Get that guy in there. Alright, so that's done. That vacuum is set. There's no more underneath except for that one straight down. Everything else is on the side of the manifold and on these two fittings right here. So, we're going to need two clamps here for these two hoses. Should look pretty good once you're done. Um, I'm gonna double check a clamp, see if I have something a little bit, a little bit tighter fitting.
don't want to use a big clamp because things don't look as nice. And since we put all this effort into painting, why not make it look good? You know what I mean? Or keep it looking good. Fits. All right. Do the same thing with the other one. I like using slightly smaller clamps or undersized, just because it just looks cleaner. You know, if you have, if you can, do it. If you can't, obviously. And do it whatever way you can. So I can just un nice fit in here. Really nice. So that's done. Now we gotta get to this vacuum line. Remember I over I over compensated for length is because I don't know where it's gonna sit. So looks like we're gonna sit right here. Just like that. So just a little bit longer than normal. Cut it, get that out of the way. Done. All nice and tight in there. Um, this vacuum line is already mounted and I'm not concerned for it. This is the diverter valve vacuum line. Nice and out of the way. This vacuum line over here is the combi valve. And we made all, we did all that earlier in the video. So we got these done. These right here. This one's still loose. Clamp here for the hose. Nice and tight down here. Nice and tight here. I'm just double checking all my little lines because I don't want to have any leaks when I get back into getting the car started. It's all good. Uh, I don't have the throttle body on or the uh, temperature sensor here because uh, we've got a new gasket coming. I don't want to reuse the one that's in here. So the next thing is we're going to actually put new O-rings on to the uh, fuel injectors. Uh, these are a little tricky so again your tiny little screwdriver. Now these were leaking. So, smart thing to do is to, to replace them. If 
you see some buildup of oil, which I do, do them a good cleaning. That way the o-ring will seat in here nicely and not leak again. So that one had a leak. This one too. If you want to be very thorough, I would pull out the injectors as well, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to swap them out with the new O-rings in there as well. Uh, the injectors are really simple. They're held together with this little clip right here. And it's just literally just pry off. Yep. Pulls forward. That part's the easy part. The hard part is actually getting the dim injector out of that. Out of the rail itself. Uh, since I have no fuel in my lines, I'm actually going to take out, just in case there is, but I don't think there is any fuel. No. Mm. Nope, there was gas in that one. Hopefully it didn't damage the paint. Um, this is actually a good time to clean this rail and polish it. Uh, I use um, some good simple metal polisher and it'll, it'll polish right up. So I'll be right back and I'm gonna take off the rail itself. But check out the rail what it looks like before. And we'll show you in a couple minutes what it'll look like after. So on the injectors, you gotta pull them out a little bit and then slide in the clip. And you gotta make sure they clip into the outer portion of here, the injector mounting, and then, then to the notch. They gotta clip into the notch of the injector. Really, really simple. Uh, same way you remove them, same way they go in. Nothing crazy. So now, with the number five Allen bit, we're gonna get the intake manifold finally mounted. First, I would probably do this weird one. Because this one has that weird bracket. Now remember, you don't want to put it on there snug. Just get them started. We'll tighten everything down to spec once we have everything actually in. Uh, there's two 10 millimeter bolts on each side. So get that going. Now this is a slow process, but we gotta make sure everything is done right. Two, and two tens. Now the tens are gonna be a little tricky, mainly because you gotta get them in there by hand. I have no way to like magnetize them there so they don't fall. Not that bad though. Get your long extension and deep socket 10. Get 
this going by hand. Okay, now that's all hand tighten. Now, as before, get your five. I just put it down, your Allen bit. I'm gonna go grab my socket one. I'll be right back because this one needs a, a longer one. So, how we did the valve cover earlier, we gotta do the same process for the intake manifold, and that's to go opposites until you get to the middle. So, we start with this one right here, and it's just tight, not super hard. And you're going to walk it over. And then you're going to get your 10. Once that's snug, reverse the process. a little kind of gunk in there or something let me all the way down there we go and then do your last two which are your 10 millimeters And you're done. Okay? Now, on the next part is installing your fuel injectors. And that's really straightforward. This just goes down. Since you got new O-rings, uh, you can do it like this. Now, my buddy Tim recommends that we splash a little bit of WD-40 right on the, on the sensor. So I'm going to do that. Now he says not to splat, not to spray it, but to put it on your hands a little bit of the WD and just do a quick just a quick lube. Because WD dries out, which is nice, and it won't damage anything. So we do a little bit of WD and then the injectors just slide right in beautifully. All right. Now we have that um, that vacuum line that we talked about earlier. Just right there. It's looking really good already. Now the next thing is we got to get that hard line that goes across. Oh no, sorry. Before we do the hard line, we got to put our wiring back in. This is really simple. It just should just clip right into place.
All right. So wiring for the injectors are done. And you notice I haven't bolted anything down yet because I haven't gotten to that point yet because we still have one more line that has to be a uh, metal line that goes over this. So let's go grab that uh, hard line that goes on top. Uh, what you can do, uh, you can put the fuel line You can just put it on. This one's going to need a clamp, so we got to get one. Starting to look really good here. And then we have the hard line that goes on top of this. Now this hard line has um what do you what do you call um has a o-ring that needs to be replaced I'm sorry uh, which I got right there uh, same procedure like this if you want it to go in nicely um, like I said get your hands a tad bit of a WD And just slap it around the o-ring really quick you don't need to do much just get it on there and now this one's tricky because it goes in between all of this like this so It's getting darker, so you guys should remember how we did this one earlier. This one was the really annoying one, so. The same way it comes out, it's the same way it goes in. Now you gotta make sure those two bolts line up down below. If not, you're gonna have to give it some wiggling and some manhandling. Because that thing is a pain. And that thing leaks coolant easily if you don't do it right. And then there's two 10 millimeter bolts that go into that, and you're done. So now that's
that's done. Here's that coolant line that goes here. Everything looks like it's going in place very, very nicely now. finally mounted. We got to get the um, lower coolant hose right here in. Oh man. This is going to be tricky because it's like... I don't know a good way of doing that one. See here. Let's pull this vacuum line out again. that one. We got this one over here on this side. We have the upper coolant hose here. Get that one in place. So Wellington. So now that you have this hose here in place, next thing is you guys need to bolt down one, two, three of the uh, main line uh, bolts for the fuel rail and for the coolant hard line. So we're back and we're pretty much doing the final pieces of buttoning up the, uh, the car. Uh, all I have left now is just putting my throttle body back on, running my intercooler piping back in. I mean that's everything part of your, your removal so I'm not going to walk you through on how to do that guys. If you were able to remove the, the whole front end you're able to put it all back together so no need to give you guys a DIY on that. But that's pretty much it. I'm going to come back when everything's actually done. We're going to show you guys how to burp uh, the system on this car. We're going to fill it with coolant and get everything else going. I did a little cleaning. Not a lot. Just sprayed some degreaser on some really dirty areas and just cleaned it up. But it came out pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy on the, uh, the end result here. Uh, I've still got to tighten down my motor mounts on each side. Nothing serious though, and my sway bar, but that's all just got to be torqued down. But you guys can see, not too shabby. The paint on here actually came out pretty good. Makes everything look pretty new. We're going to have to wipe everything down after we're done again, so because it's got some stains already on it during the assembly. Uh, one of the issues that I came, ac came across was this uh, T-fitting, or this, uh, this vacuum line. This vacuum line goes down to your, um, right here, down here into your intake, 
or your turbo inlet pipe and it goes across it's part of the EGR valve or combi valve and it goes underneath so what I end up doing was cutting the pipe that hardline pipe because I had a 90 degree angle I cut it straight I ran a piece of hose T fitted it and then cut these a little bit shorter and it fit much much nicer you know it's not gorgeous but I think it's a better fitting setup you could just see this clamps everywhere in this car I don't I don't like the way that looks but it is what it is for right now uh, eventually we're probably gonna pull the motor out maybe about another year or two and rebuild it and probably do a turbo swap and go to a big turbo so stay tuned for that down the road but for now and it's my wife's daily so we got to make sure everything was fixed and tight because we want this thing to run really good again uh, you guys can see all the new vacuums and lines here looking really good all this is just really really good and clean um, we fixed the coolant leak that was here um, brand new hose too I was leaking down in the corner I fixed it um, all the vacuum lines underneath are all nice and good that metal line that fits down here nice and tight uh, our brand new fuel lines that go from here all the way to the trunk those things are a pain uh, to install I didn't make a DIY for that because it's not a very common part that fails one reason why we failed because we hit a rock and it ripped the lines out so those weren't fun to do at all we installed our ABD uh, ABD intake uh, I've had for years I picked this up from a friend a couple years ago uh, very very simple install it looks like a piece of macaroni that goes straight down I mean it's simple um, the front core supports put on this is the one I actually replaced uh, to my comparison to my old one um, this one actually had just a couple cracks on it so I replaced it with this one that's apparently I guess better I mean it looks better I don't know by much but it's better <laughs> I gotta take off the horns put them back on just gotta move over these rubber pieces here uh, the hood bracket here has to go back on this one's a little tricky you actually put this one over this the bracket down this one over and you bolt it into place uh, mount your headlights uh, that's pretty much it though everything else is like I said um, just reverse the process during your install uh, I, I don't have much to tell you guys all right uh, I'll get back to you when we show you the rest of the process for the um, burp in the coolant system and looking for any type of